Hello everyone, I am Madhusudan Raj, your host for today. And today we are going to discuss two important uh, uh, events which, you know, which is right now going on in the Indian economy. The first one I am talking about is obviously the recent fall in the exchange rate of rupee vis-a-vis -vis dollar against other foreign currencies, importantly the US dollar. So last week uh, the rupee touched uh, its all-time low, 60 rupees per dollar in the forex market, in the foreign exchange market. So we will first analyze that phenomena and after that we will be analyzing or rather before, you know, in the beginning itself we will be, you know, uh, discussing the RBI's monetary policy announcement which also happened to be took place, you know, in last week or, uh, only just before this uh, downfall in rupees started, you know, actually the moment RBI announced its policy rupee tank by you know a couple of paisas and after that the next day uh, there was uh, the announcement by the US Federal Reserve Bank uh, for uh, FOMC committee and after that after that announcement actually there was a kind of a big uh, earthquake in in the world stock markets as well as in the bond market and in the currency markets. So let us start uh, our discussion with uh, uh, this policy announcement of RBI. So RBI on uh, in last week, June 17, 2013, uh, they announced that, as I was telling you in my last lec my last video report, that they are not going to do much uh, with the interest rate because the RBI has boxed itself into uh, boxed itself. You know, they have painted themselves into the corner. So right now they don't have enough room of doing anything because on one side the economy is uh, tanking, the growth rate is now 4.8%. So that demands that, you know, means uh, the demand is coming from, the pressure is coming from the government and the industry people that RBI should lower its inter interest rate and make the cheap artificial credit available so that they can pump this money into their newly started projects and that's how the economy can again get going right but uh, that uh, that thing that policy RBI is not taking particularly the governor Subaru because uh, on the other side the inflation is not coming down uh, particularly the uh, retail inflation the uh, consumer price index the WPI has gone down at least because of their you know statistical shenanigans, statistical manu you know, manipulations but even after those manipulations the uh, consumer price index, the retail inflation is not going down, it's stubbornly stuck at something like 10% and that is what is not giving enough room to RBI to reduce the market interest rate because as I said you know Subbarav is fearing that if he's going to reduce the interest rate right now then that is going to result into higher prices in future you know, and and according to the mainstream economists that higher prices are nothing but inflation so he's on the one side worrying about inflation and on the other side he's also uh, thinking about you know boosting the economic growth but as I said it is all phony this whole trade-off is actually non-existent you know you can have uh, fantastic economic growth a normal path of economic growth and you know, economic progress without any kind of inflation or only thing we have to do is you know RBI should be dismantled and we should go back to pure market based commodity standard that is preferably gold and silver standard and uh, you should have 100% reserve banking with uh, uh, free market capitalism and this two system this whole system of free market capitalism will ensure that without any kind of systematic inflation we can grow we can progress but uh, the power to be, these authorities, they are not going to relinquish their power easily or voluntarily. Ultimately, as I said, the market will compel them to give up their power and market is very powerful. So ultimately, it will overwhelm them. But, you know, that will you know, happen in the long run. But in the short run, we will have to go through these ups and downs, ups and downs as RBI is lowering and increasing the interest rates. The economy is going to... Uh, go up and down this business cycles. So RBI, because it, it was very concerned about inflation, you know, they are saying that they are concerned about inflation. It's, as I said, it's just lip service, right? It's a job warning, just trying to fool people. On the other side, they are printing a lot of money. 
but uh, he's saying that I'm concerned about inflation, so I'm not going to lower the market interest rate. So when he said that, Reserve Bank, and they also kept the uh, cash reserve ratio, CRR, unchanged. Reserve Bank of India on Monday kept the key interest rate unchanged, citing elevated food inflation, rupee depreciation, and uncertainty of foreign fund inflows. So uh, not only that, their own uh, their inflationary policy is responsible for both this phenomena. Uh, first thing is this rising prices, rising food inflation. Second is uh, depreciating rupee. So depreciating rupee is not some kind of independent phenomena. It is actually a result of the same, you know, cheap money policy, inflationary policy of the Indian Central Bank RBI. So because of their money printing, uh, rupee is depreciating. And uh, over, over uh, foreign fund inflow is also being determined by how the Indian economy is doing. And the Indian economy is heavily influenced by this intervention from the central bank and government. So in no way we can say that these foreign fund flows, these FII flows are independent of any kind of Indian government's policy making or RBI's monetary policy. In fact, they are heavily influenced by that, right? If the Indian economy is not performing well, then obviously they are going to pull out their money from here, right? And why Indian economy is not performing well? Because of government's interventionism and RBI's loose credit, you know, and money policy. So these are the reasons, you know, which are, you know, as the government is saying that some, some factors are out of our reach, that is not true. All these things are under their control and under their influence, right? Because of their policies, we are having food inflation, depreciating rupee, and you know um, uh, some kind of blocked inflow of you know foreign funds, etc. So as you know, as always happens, government is very conveniently you know uh, blaming other people for their own mistakes, for their own flawed policies. Always, all the governments do such thing. All the good things, you know, all the successes are ours, and all the failures are of other people of uh, populace basically or some foreigner so they are they will find some kind of scapegoats and uh, this time around the scapegoats are foreign fund uh, foreign investment houses and all these foreign fund flows etc but as i said it is you know basically determined by their own local policies but anyways immediately after they announced this uh, monetary policy rupee uh, was down but major, you know, kind of major earthquake came on uh, Wednesday evening, evening in India and morning noon time in America. There, their Federal Open Market Committee uh, in USA, uh, America, their uh, Federal Reserve Bank, their Central Bank, they have their own policy making committee, FOMC, uh, where the chairman of US Fed, Ben Bernanke, he announced that they may uh, slow down the pace of uh, money printing later on in this year and they may kind of slow it down very rapidly in 2014 uh, and this you know market took as some kind of signal of the stoppage of money printing programs called quantitative easing and suddenly because of that as I said all the stock markets and all other markets bond market currency market the commodity market, they all are right now inflated because of this loose monetary policy of world central banks. Immediately, because of this announcement, and again, the announcement was completely funny. They are not going to reduce the uh, purchase of treasury bonds, etc. They are not going to stop m printing money. If they will do that, the whole house of cards, the world economy will collapse. Uh, that is actually required, but they will not allow because they... The, the one thing central bankers really worry about and really fear is deflation, right? They have this uh, deflation phobia, so that's why they're never going to allow that. But you know, when he said that the stock market collapsed and rupee also collapsed to its, you know, all-time low of 60 rupees per dollar. And actually, uh, after that, you know, in the later session, it recovered a bit. But right now, it is trading at something like 59 points, some, you know, paisa. Now we have to understand, as I said, why the rupee is actually depreciating against, you know, other foreign currencies like U.S. dollar or euro or, you know, a British pound. Now, uh, in forex, uh, rupee is just like any other commodity and in any other market, the price of a commodity is determined by its demand and supply. Now in the for forex market, in foreign exchange market, uh, four factors are involved like in any other market. 
So here also on one side, what determines the uh, exchange rate of rupee versus this other foreign currencies are these two, you know, four factors. The first one is the demand of rupee and the second one is the supply of rupee. So demand of rupee and supply of rupee is, is on the one side and on the other side you have if we take its you know exchange rates rate against dollar then on the other side you have demand of dollar and supply of dollar so these four factors are actually determining the exchange rate of a rupee vis a vis dollar so for example if the supply of rupee goes up and if we assume that all other uh, factors all three other variables are remaining constant right if we if we have this satirist paribus assumption they are not changing then what will happen the exchange rate of rupee against dollar will go down because the supply has gone up demand has stays where it is and we are also assuming that the dollars demand and supply is also constant so rupee will depreciate on the other side if the demand for rupee goes up in the foreign exchange market and other things remaining constant then the rupees you know exchange rate against dollar will go up that means the rupee will appreciate it will become stronger compared to dollar on the other side uh, if the dollar supply goes up and other things remains constant then the dollar will weaken and rupee will strengthen right and if the dollar's demand goes up and supply remains stable as well as rupees demand and supply is also constant then obviously dollar will you know strengthen and the rupee with with that dollar will weaken so what we are having, so these four factors are actually responsible for determining the exchange rate of rupee against any other foreign currency. Now right now uh, what is happening is on the one side the supply of rupee is very rapidly going up. As I said in my past you know, economic reports that uh, RBI is printing money at something like 9% annual rate you know in this particular year since the beginning of this financial crisis they were pumping money at the pace of something like you know 13 percent to 17 percent per annum so that is the rate of inflation here in india so that means the supply of money is going up and on the other side you know if the demand is not very much there because in the international market right then what is going to happen and if we say that the dollar is pretty much there then the rupee is going to go down and on the other side last thursday what happened is uh federal reserve bank you know us central bank it came out and said that they are going to reduce the supply of money they are going to you know lower the rate of money printing and because of that dollar you know becomes you know stronger and that's why rupee further depreciated it tank more compared to dollar but mainly the factor which is responsible is as i said uh, the supply of rupee which is going up at a rapid alarming rate just because the rbi is creating this money out of thin air right so when the finance minister chidambaram is saying that well this is all because of foreign factors and we cannot do anything about that he is telling everybody that we don't have to worry about this falling rupee and it's going to stabilize on its own but never you know who, who knows where it's going to stabilize he was saying that let it find its natural level in the free market there is no free market in the foreign exchange or any other market we don't know what is the you know real you know natural level you know the real natural level of all these fiat paper currencies is actually zero they don't have any real value you know when they are playing this role of money because they're not money they're just paper the real money is gold and silver right so ultimately he was saying that we should not be worrying but obviously the import bill is going up and again that's going to creep it into higher prices that's going to exacerbate the situation of inflation again and that's why the rbi was boxed in they can do much with the interest rate and that's why the economy is also in trouble because i know our oil supply is mostly coming from outside so if the rupee is going to become you know weaker and weaker against dollar then obviously that's going to have a lot of problems that's going to have a lot of effect on the local economy because oil is the main you know main energy you know source for any kind of economic activity but what i'm saying is that this chidambaram's you know statement that these are because of foreign factors is absolutely a lie right again he is fooling all of us again he is finding scapegoats in outside factors Outside factors have some impact, but the major impact also is coming from RBI's loose monetary policy. This creation of huge amount of money out of thin air 
that is what is resulting into higher supply of money compared to other currencies and ultimately that is you know resulting into this depreciating rupee so it is completely false to say that it is all because of foreign factors RBI and the government is pretty much responsible. Government is responsible because they are not you know, having any clear-cut economic policy. They are not allowing all these foreign companies to come in and start their own you know, businesses over here, which will bring the foreign you know, dollar into this economy, which will increase the demand of rupee. And that will make you know, rupee stronger. But they are not doing that. So all these FIIs are pulling out their money from the Indian economy. Right? So that is the reason why we have this you know tanking you know rupee against dollar and other side they are blaming gold and oil imports and they're restricting you know restricting gold imports but as i said it's just one effect of their loose monetary policy it is not the cause of you know widening current account deficit it is just a symptom the cause is rbi's loose monetary policy as long as they are printing money we are going to have all these problems but you know, ultimately, what we have to understand is uh, all these fiat paper currencies are right now in the you know race to the bottom. Ultimately, all these governments are mercantilist, fascist governments, and their uh, kind of economic model is to weaken their currency and try to boost the export sector. And you know, when they they are all you know having this uh, competitive devaluation of their currencies that's what is going to happen right so we are at actually right now witnessing currency wars right so ultimately what will happen is all this you know fiat paper currencies of world are going down and they are you know in the race to the bottom you know it, it doesn't matter which one is going to go to the bottom first the the only important thing to for us to know is that they all are going down in the end right so ultimately the you know clear one you know asset standing from all this mayhem the financial and economic crisis which is coming you know all is is precious metals right gold and silver they are the real asset the real money so they are going to be your insurance policy right all these currencies are ultimately going to go down so this you know chidambaram's idea that nothing you know outside forces are responsible is completely wrong just, you know, rupee is tanking because RBI is loose monetary policy, and as long as they are printing money, rupee will continue to remain weak. And you know, and as long as it, it depends now if if the U.S. central bank is going to print more dollars, you know, compared to what RBI is print, you know, RBI is printing uh, rupees. So whoever will print fast, their their currency will weaken quickly. But it just doesn't matter, as I said, for you and me. Uh, my dear you know viewers what is important is that all these fiat currencies are going to go down so I, I hope you understand what is going on in the foreign exchange market right recently as I said US Federal Bank is just flying they're never going to stop printing money it, it is required actually but they will not do that because the moment they will stop printing money the whole world economy will collapse collapse because it is based on this phony paper wealth and when they'll stop printing money ultimately that is what is going to happen so we only have two scenarios over here if they will stop printing money then economies will collapse because of you know greater depression which is coming and when that will arrive they will you know react by printing more money so maybe we will have kind of you know a depressionary hyperinflation kind of scenario in the end but whatever the case we are going to be get, you know we are getting into trouble we are screwed Right, so we have to continue to protect ourselves by buying hard assets and staying away from any kind of paper products. Right, so the idea is again the same thing, and uh, we have to watch right when this is going to happen. You know, I cannot tell you when when all these things will happen, but it is pretty much baked in. Right, these things are going to happen because when you print a lot of money, you have already created the inflation, and you are going to see the dire consequences of this inflationary policy in future. So that's what we are experiencing right now and that, that's what we are going to experience in future also. So you, you know, uh, be careful over there and continue to protect yourself against governments, all these, you know, uh, dangerous policies by buying physical assets, staying away from paper market. All right then, thank you very much for watching me and I'll be back soon with you soon. Good night.